Edgar and Amy are brother and sister. Edgar loves edges. Doing the edge pieces is Edgar's favorite part of the puzzle. Edgar's perfect puzzle would be 100% edge pieces. Amy is the opposite. I couldn't think of a punny name for her, but she's the opposite one. Amy hates edge pieces. Her perfect puzzle would have no edges at all. But is that even possible? How can we satisfy these two very different sibling puzzlers? I think we're gonna need some puzzle math. Hi, I'm Dan, and this is Puzzle File. Today, just for fun, I'm going to be trying to find the ideal puzzles to please Edgar and Amy. The question of how many edge pieces we can expect a particular puzzle to have is simple in theory, but it's complicated in reality because of how variable piece cuts can be from puzzle to puzzle. Let's start with a simplified example. Let's say we have a 500 piece puzzle. To make it easy, we're going to say that it's a square shape and it's grid cut, meaning that the pieces are cut in orderly columns and rows. The alternative would be random cut, where the pieces are cut into all kinds of wacky shapes. With a random cut puzzle, all bets are off. So ours is grid cut, and let's go even a step further and say that our grid cut pieces are essentially square. They're not stretched in either direction. Now, if you're quick with square roots, you know that we already have a problem because you can't make a square puzzle out of 500 square pieces. You would have 22.36 pieces on each side, which is not allowed. But that's okay. This is why puzzles are almost never actually 500 pieces or 1,000 pieces. They usually have a few more pieces than what's listed on the box. By the way, Matt Parker at Stand Up Maths did a fantastic video about predicting how many pieces are actually in your puzzle. I'm going to link that below for you. So we're just going to round our 22.36 puzzle pieces up to 23. Which gives us 529 pieces total. But we've got our square. So to figure out how many edge pieces we have in our puzzle, we're going to multiply 23 times 4 is 92, but that counts the corners twice, so we've got to subtract 4 from that, which gives us 88. So we have 88 edge pieces. In geometry terms, we're talking about area and perimeter. So the area of our square is 529 pieces squared and the perimeter is 88 edge pieces. Now, 88 out of 529 is about 16.6% edge pieces, and neither of our puzzlers is going to be satisfied with that. Remember, Edgar's perfect puzzle is 100% edge pieces, and Amy's is 0%. So Amy might be a bit happier than Edgar, but I think we can do better for both of them. Let's start with Edgar, who is really not pleased with our square-shaped puzzle. So let's go ahead and adjust it just a little. And we're going to stretch it into a bit of a rectangle. We'll say that our grid is now 30 pieces by 17 which means the total area is now 510, and the perimeter is going to be 90 edge pieces. So 90 out of 510 is going to give us 17.6% edge pieces. So that's getting better. So you can start to see the further we stretch our square puzzle out, the more edge pieces we can expect. So there's a type of puzzle that I think Edgar would be pretty pleased with. The panoramic. This is Unicorn Garden. It's a 500-piece panoramic puzzle from French toy company Jaco. I'm probably saying that wrong. I had a bit of a time finding a copy of this at a reasonable price because it's out of print now, and I don't think it was ever sold in the U.S., 
So European puzzlers would probably have an easier time getting a hold of one of these. But this puzzle was totally worth the hunt. The illustration by Agata Kawa is incredibly beautiful. I've never tried this brand before, so I don't know what the quality is going to be like. So let's take a look. Okay, again, this is Unicorn Garden by Jiko. It's 500 pieces. I think the box is very attractive. Instead of trying to put the whole panoramic image on it, they've just wrapped part of it around the box. On the back side, we have like a little thumbnail of the full image. You can see it's a triptych. It almost looks like an old tapestry. And the puzzle is going to measure about a foot by just over three feet. Inside, the pieces are bagged. And we have a poster that's rolled up. It looks like the poster is going to be the same size as the puzzle. That's a very big poster. I'm going to unroll that in a minute. Okay, right away, I'm very happy with these pieces. So they're really thick. They have a nice matte finish to them. Look at that. There's almost no shine on these at all. That's excellent. They have a paper backing that's printed with their logo. And you can see that these pieces are not like the ones in our idealized hypothetical square puzzle. Uh, these are very stretched out. And I'm seeing some with this unusual wavy edge to it. So I'm excited to start working with these. If this kind of stuff is your jam, I've got to tell you about a free and easy way to learn more about geometry and lots of other math and science topics too. Brilliant.org. Brilliant is the best way to learn about computer science, data science, and math through fun, interactive courses. They've got thousands of different lessons to choose from, with new ones being added all the time and at all different skill levels. So if you're a beginner student looking for some extra help, or if you're a total professional, you're going to find lessons that fit your level and let you go at your own pace. Like I've been enjoying their 3D geometry course because it starts slow and it helps you to build the intuition that you're gonna need to tackle the bigger problems later. And it's fun to try everything that Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days. Visit brilliant.org slash puzzle file or click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you to use that link are gonna get 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Wow, I am so thrilled with this image. This is gonna be wonderful. It's so beautiful and it looks really fun to puzzle with all these different details. So my plan is to start with the edges and get these uh, decorative borders filled in. Other than that, I kind of don't think I'm going to do any other sorting. And from there, I'll just kind of see what jumps out at me and start piecing it together. Let's go. Okay, as predicted, we've got a lot of edge pieces in this puzzle. These are the side edges where these run up and down. And then these are that decorative border between the triptych panels. Over here is the big slush pile. And at first glance, it looks like these are all really similar colors, but there's so much detail in this illustration that I don't think we're going to have too much of a problem with it. Let's start framing it out.
Okay, I love, love, love this puzzle. The artwork is so good. So many great details. Really fun and fast to puzzle. Nice thick pieces. Beautiful matte finish. No glare at all. And check this out. Full puzzle pickup. Nice tight fit. Jiko makes a bunch of these panoramic puzzles, and I highly recommend them. My only complaint about it is that it was maybe a little too easy. I felt like it was over so fast. I would have loved it if they did this in a thousand piece size. But how do we think Edgar would feel about it? How close are we to our goal of 100% edge pieces? Let's count these edge pieces and figure it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 23, 24, 25, 26, 48, 49, 50. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's ten pieces on the short edge and fifty pieces on the long edge. Okay, so here is our panoramic puzzle. Ten on the short side, fifty pieces on the long side. So it is exactly five hundred pieces total. And our perimeter is gonna be a hundred and sixteen out of five hundred. 23.2% edge pieces. So that's better than our square puzzle, better than our rectangular puzzle. Almost a quarter of the pieces in that puzzle are edge pieces. So that's pretty good. It's definitely an improvement, but we're still not very close to our goal of 100% edge pieces. So where do we go from here? Well, we could find an even more exaggerated panoramic, like maybe the 13 foot long Metamorphos by Selagiochi. But actually because that puzzle is 3000 pieces, it changes the ratio a lot and we end up with only about 17% edge pieces. For the sake of completeness, I do wanna mention that there are puzzles out there like the edge puzzles from TDC Games, where the gimmick is that every piece has a straight edge side so you can't tell what the true edge pieces are. Or the Experience the Edge puzzles from Great American Puzzle Factory, which are cut into a series of concentric frames for sort of a similar effect. For our purposes, I don't consider those false edges to be edge pieces, and neither does Edgar. So what we need to do is to stretch our puzzle out even further, keep stretching it until it becomes a line. So our 500 piece puzzle needs to be arranged either as one row of 500 pieces or two rows of 250 pieces. Now that line doesn't have to stay as a straight line. It can take any kind of shape that we want and it can even branch in multiple directions as long as the line is never more than two puzzle pieces deep. And so the good news for Edgar is there are an infinite number of shapes that would give us a puzzle with 100% edge pieces. The bad news is I don't think that any of them actually exist. If anyone knows of a puzzle like this or knows of one that gets us closer to this, please let me know. One other interesting idea for Edgar is that some fractals have an infinite perimeter, which in theory could give Edgar an infinite number of edge pieces. I don't know of any infinite fractal jigsaw puzzles, but maybe one day. In the meantime, let's turn our attention to Amy. Now we're already a lot closer with Amy. Remember our square puzzle was 16.6% .6 edge pieces, which makes her goal of 0% edge pieces feel like it's within reach. When we were trying to increase that percentage, we stretched that square out. To decrease it, we can't really compress the square any further. So we need to start thinking outside the square. So what if we go triangle? Triangular puzzles do exist, like the Triazel series, which also has triangular pieces. Okay, the math at this point gets a lot more complicated because we're no longer working with our nice grid. And I'm not really a math guy, I'm a puzzle guy. So I'm not gonna show the full math here. I don't fully understand the full math, but if you wanna see where all these numbers come from, you're gonna wanna look up the isoperimetric theorem. Now remember, for Amy, we're trying to maximize area and minimize perimeter. 
So you can kind of intuitively see that the triangle actually does worse for us. It pinches everything in tight, so we've got more perimeter and less area once we get to the triangle. Now if we go in the opposite direction, let's say we add a side to it and make it a pentagon, in that direction, our percentage of edge pieces is going to start dropping. One of the rules from the isoparametric theorem is for any regular polygon with n number of sides, the perimeter to area ratio is going to decrease as the number of sides increases. So if the pentagon is better than the square, maybe we give Amy one of these old Springbok octagon puzzles, like this one, Florentine Mosaic, the octopuzzle. It's better. Or maybe we can find her a dodecagon, a 12-sided puzzle. Even better. Well, what about a 20-sided puzzle? Or a hundred? Or a million? So the thing about a million-sided puzzle is that it pretty much starts to look the same as an infinite-sided puzzle. And the special name that we give to an infinite-sided shape is a circle. This circular puzzle is called Goddesses and Warriors. The art by Ross MacDonald depicts goddesses, warriors, deities, and heroines from around the world. It was put out by Ibu in 2018 before they branded their puzzle line as Ibu Peace and Love. This puzzle is out of print now, but you can still find copies of it out there pretty easily. I'm very curious about how many edge pieces this thing has and how it's gonna to compare to our 16% edge pieces for a square puzzle. We know that the circle has the lowest possible perimeter to area ratio, but you can't really cut a circle into a grid. So it looks like this puzzle is cut into a series of concentric circles. And I don't know how that cut is going to affect our percentage. Comparing it to our hypothetical grid cut square puzzle is sort of apples and oranges in that respect. But let's take a closer look at the box and then we'll put it together and we'll find out. Okay, here we go. 500 piece round puzzle by Ibu, goddesses, warriors, deities, and heroines from around the world. This comic book style artwork is so great. I love it. And it says there's an informational poster included. On the back, we've got our full puzzle image. This is a picture of the poster that's inside. And then a list of the women who are depicted here. So I'll tell you more about who's in the puzzle as we work through it. It's a nice big box. So if you're someone who sorts pieces in a box, it's a good one. Now, I bought my copy secondhand off of eBay, so I don't know if these pieces were originally bagged or what. But when I got them, they were just loose, uh, hoping they're all here. Now, Ibu's pieces are, like, aggressively glossy. It is definitely a choice they're making. If you're very bothered by glare, this is not the right brand for you. But if you've got a good lighting setup, if you puzzle in natural light, it does make the pieces look really special. And they've got a good thickness. They don't feel cheap at all. And I'm already seeing all of our edge pieces have this thick red border that'll make them easy to spot. And at the bottom of the box, we have a poster with the puzzle image, some advertising for puzzles that they may or may not be making anymore. And then, wow, this is a huge informational poster. Wowzer. Okay, here's my plan for this one. I'm gonna save the edge pieces for later. There's not a lot going on around the edge. All the action is really happening right in the center. So I'm gonna put the edge pieces aside. I think I'm also gonna sort out these like green monsters and villains and this yellow background. I think that'll all get sorted to the side. And then I'll try to focus on our goddesses and warriors first. Let's go. All right, here's all of our edge pieces, and it definitely looks like fewer pieces than we had for the panoramic. 
Over here is all of the monsters and villains and background pieces. This is a lot more than I thought it was gonna be. This looks like it's gonna be the trickiest part for sure. And then here's all of our goddesses and warriors. Something I noticed while sorting is because the puzzle is cut in concentric circles, the pieces get smaller and smaller as you approach the center. So that's gonna give us a big clue. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and start with these four that I think make the center. Off to a good start. Okay, our heroes are complete. Doing a round puzzle like this is an interesting challenge when I am so used to working with grid cut pieces because your intuition is just a little off for how things are gonna line up. And the pieces don't quite line up with one another. They're all a little bit offset. So your brain really has to work in a little bit of a different way. Next up, I'm moving on to this pile of pieces. This is all of the villains and monsters. I do think they're going to be more difficult because it's all green, but I don't think it'll be too bad because we've got all of this to work off of already. Let's find out. So that took almost exactly the same amount of time as the last one. I think the other one was two hours and 41 minutes. This was a really fun puzzle. I love the artwork. I loved getting to really sit with all these little details that make up these characters. And it made me so curious to learn more about them. It really wasn't difficult at all because there's so much clear color separation between them. And definitely the hardest part was all these green monsters. The super glossy finish on this was really annoying for filming. It didn't really disrupt my puzzling because these pieces are so sharp and distinct. The colors are so bright and vivid. And the glossy finish makes the final product look really special. So I have mixed feelings about it. But all in all, this is another great Ebu. I'm definitely a fan of this brand. But what about Amy? How do we think she's going to like this puzzle? Let's count up the edge pieces and see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 46, 47, 42, 63, 64. 64 edge pieces out of 500. So the circle puzzle has 500 pieces, and the perimeter is 64 edge pieces. So 64 out of 500 is going to be 12.8%. 
edge pieces. So that's definitely a big improvement over the square, but 12% is not 0%. So is that it for Amy? The isoparametric theorem tells us that you can't do any better than a circle. It's not really fair. I mean, sure, nobody's making all edge piece puzzles right now, but in theory, Edgar could make an infinite number of all edge piece puzzles, all in different shapes. On the other hand, there are many, many circular puzzles currently available for Amy to try, but none of them will ever have 0% edge pieces. And let me just head you off before you start suggesting the impossibles puzzles or anything similar to that. These puzzles that claim that they have no edge pieces but what they really have is no straight edges. Amy doesn't care what shape the edges take. Any piece that's at the edge of the puzzle is an edge piece to Amy. But guess what? There actually is a shape that has no edges. And what's even better is there are actual real life puzzles that are made in this shape. To get around the rules of the isoparametric theorem, we have to start thinking in 3D. A sphere! Amy needs a spherical puzzle. She can puzzle forever and never reach the edge. There's a bunch of them out there. Uh, the one that I really want is the 540 colors sphere from the playgroup. That is a thing of beauty. So thanks for sticking with me through this kind of silly video of completely useless puzzle knowledge. I think we came up with some pretty good answers for Edgar and Amy. Of course, the real answer is they should sit down and do a puzzle together, and Edgar does the edges and Amy does the middle. Boom, problem solved. Let me know if I got any of my math wrong or if you have a better suggestion for puzzles for Amy and Edgar. Both of these puzzles were fantastic. They're both out of print, but the companies that made them are still in business. So check out Jiko and Ibu. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll consider hitting that button before you go. But right now, I'm going to get back to puzzling, and I'll catch you all next time.